Hey everybody, John the Other here, obviously. And a few days ago, I uploaded a video outlining the likely passage of a law in Canada which will have the effect of banning from court documentary evidence of consent in criminal cases of accused sexual assault. I asked people in that video to tell me in the comments if they wanted a technical breakdown of how Bill C-51 will prevent the use of documentation of consent in defense evidence in a sex assault trial. So that's what this is today. Now, Bill C-51 is not yet law, but it will likely become law within the next few months or perhaps sooner. And it is what is commonly called an omnibus bill, which means it's got lots and lots of updates and additions to existing legislation within it. Some of the updates to existing law are benign. Some of them are the removal of obsolete laws like dueling and so on and so forth. But buried within all of that legal housekeeping is housekeeping item number 21, which includes the following. Section 276 of the Act, that's the criminal code, is amended by adding the following after subsection 3. It says, for the purpose of this section, sexual activity includes any communication made for a sexual purpose or whose content is of a sexual nature. Now, without knowing what the criminal code already says, it's very hard to know what this means exactly. So today we're going to get a short tour of Section 276 of Canada's criminal code. Section 276 is part of the code dealing with what evidence is allowed and what evidence is not allowed to be adduced by an accused person in their defense against a charge, and it's quite a lengthy section, but it begins with the heading, Evidence of a Complainant's Sexual Activity. And Section 276, Paragraph 1, reads as follows. It says, In proceedings in respect of an offense under Section 151, 152, 153, and so on and so forth, um, 171, 172, 173, it lists a bunch of sections where offenses can be uh, referred to, then goes, evidence that the complainant has engaged in sexual activity, whether with the accused or with another person, is not admissible to support an inference that by reason of the sexual nature of that activity, the complainant is A, more likely to have consented to the sexual activity that forms the subject matter of the charge, or B, less worthy of belief. Now, I'll explain what that means. This is called the twin myths. And what it says is there is a line of reasoning that is not permitted to a defendant when defending against a charge under any of the numbered sections I listed above, 170, 171, and so on, which includes the various forms of sexual assault defined in the criminal code. The line of reasoning that is not permitted says you cannot suggest that because a claimed victim of sexual assault was promiscuous or previously engaged in consenting sexual acts, therefore they probably agreed to and consented to the sexual act that is under debate in this particular criminal case. So a defendant's lawyer cannot argue that because Susie humped the entire hockey team, obviously she probably agreed to have sex with my client here, Mr. Smith, sitting innocently in the prisoner's dock. That is not a legally permitted line of reasoning in the court. You can also not use a complainant's prior sexual history to suggest that because she was a super slut, she is an unreliable witness whose testimony should be disregarded or treated as sketchy. And I'm going to say here that this existing part of the criminal code is correct. If somebody has worked as a porn actress, that does not mean that they cannot be a victim of sexual assault. If somebody has lived a swinger lifestyle, that cannot be used to discredit their testimony in the court. And I'll read the beginning of section 276 again. In proceedings in respect of an offense under sections blah 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 blah, Evidence that the complainant has engaged in sexual activity, whether with the accused or with another person, is not admissible to support an inference that by reason of the sexual nature of that activity, the complainant is either A, more likely to have consented to that sexual activity that forms the matter of the charge, or B, less worthy of belief. So again, this says that being previously sexually active cannot be used to suggest that a complainant probably agreed to the sexual act forming the subject of a charge, and also a complainant being previously sexually active cannot be used to suggest they are an unreliable witness. Bill C-51 adds to this section by saying the following. Section 276 of the Act is amended by adding the following after subsection 3. For the purpose of this section, sexual activity includes any communication made for a sexual purpose or whose content 
is of a sexual nature. Now, I've previously said that Bill C-51 will ban documentation of consent from inclusion in a defendant's evidence. And some people will point out that I'm being stupid. Of course, this isn't banned from evidence. It just has to be included properly. And that complaint against my logic here will be partly true. Elements of the sexual history of the complainant can be included in defense evidence if those elements are submitted in a special application of the court separate from the main proceedings of the trial and if adequate reasons are provided for inclusion of that sexual history. Section 276, subsection 2 reads as follows. It says, in proceedings in respect of an offense referred to in subsection 1, no evidence shall be adduced by or on behalf of the accused that the complainant has engaged in sexual activity other than the sexual activity that forms the subject matter of the charge, whether with the accused or with another person, unless the judge, the provincial court judge, or justice determines in accordance with the procedures set out in 276, number 1 and number 2, that the evidence is A, of specific instances of sexual activity, is B, relevant to the issue at trial, and C, has significant probative value that is not substantially outweighed by the danger of prejudice to the proper administration of justice. So a defense attorney can offer evidence to the court, including the sexual history of the complainant, but only by making a special application to include that evidence, and it must be submitted to the judge in advance of presenting it to the court with the main proceeding of the trial. So we go back to the bill C-51, what's being proposed to be added. Section 276 of the Act is amended by adding the following under subsection 3. For the purpose of this section, sexual activity includes any communication made for a sexual purpose or whose content is of a sexual nature. So sexual communication is defined by this to be included in the existing legal definition of sexual activity. And that means that if an accused person had a handwritten note agreeing to a sexual act and that note was signed by the person accusing them of assault, that note would not be allowed into evidence unless it had first been submitted in an application to the court to allow it, and that application might be rejected, but worse, that application exposes the evidence of the note to the prosecution and to the complainant in advance. If an accuser is lying to the court and their lie is revealed to the court by the existence of sexual communications between the accused and the accuser, that must be provided in evidence in advance, allowing them to modify their story and thus work around it in advance. The purpose of this change to the law is to make it so that a lying accuser will not be caught in their lie by text messages or voicemails or emails or love letters which show that they are lying because the accused person will have to submit those communications to the court for approval in advance and exposing those to the accuser, allowing them to modify their story in advance. So there will be many more false accusations against innocent people and many more innocent people will be unable to defend themselves with the evidence that they have that the sex they had was consensual. That is the purpose of paragraph 21 in the upcoming Bill C-51. Thanks very much for listening, and as always, have a lovely day. And, by the way, if you'd like to help support Lighthouse, which helps people defend against false accusations, there are links to the PayPal for Lighthouse in the low bar of this video. Thanks for listening, and have a lovely day.